Welcome back, everybody, to another exciting edition of Ed Puzzle Notes. This might be the most important Ed Puzzle Notes of the second semester. The reason is because these things called dihybrid crosses, if you know how to do them, if you know how to do all the crosses, the monohybrid and the dihybrids, if you know them down pat, I can give you your score right now. It'll be good. It'll probably be an A or maybe a B. If you do not know how to do them, I can give you your score right now. It'll be that. So if right now you are trying to multitask, watch this, and play a game on your cell phone at the same time, some people can do it. There'll probably be a couple, handful of you guys that can do it. But for the vast majority of you, if you're playing a game right now while you're watching this, that will be your grade on this test. That's not being mean. That's just what we call keeping it real. So a dihybrid cross. We already did monohybrid cross where we looked at one trait for like eye color where we can go like big B equals brown. Doesn't really mean brown. It just means not blue. And little b recessive equals blue. And then we... We make our little monohybrid with just four squares and let's say a heterozygous brown. Heterozygous means different, so big B, little b, crossed with a homozygous blue, little b, little b, and you fill in the box. That's pretty easy to do. Genotypic ratio would be one half will be big B, little b. One half or 50% will be little b, little b. And the phenotypic ratio will be half will have not blue eyes or brown. Could be hazel, but just not blue. And half will have blue eyes. Now the only difference is now we're looking at two traits. So for example, you might be looking at flower color, which would be easy. That would be a monohybrid, four squares. But at the same time, we're going to look at plant height. So now we're going to have not two letters for our genotypes like big B, little b. Now we're going to have four letters. So it could be like big P equals purple, little p equals white. That's easy. But we're also going to do plant height. So it might be big T equals tall and little t equals short. So, our genotypes now are not going to be two letters. Now they're going to be four letters. So, if it's, let's say, heterozygous purple, that's going to be big P, little p, because heterozygous means different. And since it's got one dominant or big P, it's going to be purple. And we'll say it's homozygous short. So, it would be little t, little t. So that's our new genotype when we're looking at two traits at once. Big P, little p, little t, little t. Now when you've got two traits and four different alleles, we cannot have four boxes anymore. Now that number of boxes is going to go up to 16. The good news is all of you guys can do this. It's going to seem really, really difficult at first. But, if you are paying attention, not playing a game, and trying your best, we will get through this. We will master this concept so you can get this grade on our exam and stay away from that grade right there. Okay, so definitely take this down in your notes. You might not know what it means right now, but I'm going to try to make this as simple as humanly possible. Step one in any type of cross, whether it's a dihybrid with two traits or a monohybrid with just one trait, the number, th number one thing you got to do is find out the genotypes of the parents. That's why it is so important for you to know the difference between terms like heterozygous, homozygous. Remember, heterozygous and hybrid mean the same thing. It also is extremely important that you know the difference between dominant and recessive. Because if you don't, you will not be able to do these things. And the vast, most of our 
points on our test is going to be, can you do these things? And once you can do one, you can do a thousand. Now, the, the toughest part is always number two. And I'm going to try to give you a way to make it easier. You've got to find out all the different possible combinations of alleles in the gametes. Now, when it's only one trait, like say big B, little b, well, there's only two possible combinations. You can give the big B or you can give the little b. That's easy. But when you have two traits and four different letters or four different alleles, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Now, when we get to the, when I start showing you how to do these things, make sure, and I may let you use these notes on your test, so take these notes down, please. Regular bios, I will probably let you use them. Honors, probably not. But, it's not that hard. A rule, make sure you have two different letters above each box. So, with monohybrids, we had one letter, like big B, little b. Now, on this next one, you got to have two letters, and they got to be different. So, do not give me two Bs above each box. It might be a big B and a little F, and a little B and a big F. So, make sure you have two letters above each box, and make sure that they're both different. And I will try to explain this as we go because there's ways that you can eliminate some work and save some time if you know what you're doing. Alright, so here's a little trick I used to try to get you to understand step two on the previous slide of finding all the possible allele combinations in the gametes. We're going to pretend like these four people are on like a deserted island and they're going to try to repopulate the island because it's a big island, there's only four of them, they're going to live there forever so they want to start repopulating the island, you know, to make a new population of people. So we're going to call this guy right here Bill, over here on the left. We're, we're going to give him a big B for Bill. This next guy in his suit with the black hair, we're going to call him Bob, little B. This next girl with the, like, really dark hair, we're going to call her Jennifer, big J. And this girl with the red shirt with a little bit lighter hair, we're going to call her Jill with a little j. Now, if they're going to repopulate the island, who can have kids with who? What are all the possible ways we can have kids? Well, Bill can have kids with Jennifer. So that'd be big B, big J. That's one way. Bill can also have kids with Jill over here. So that'd be big B, little j. Now, that's it for Bill. I mean, Bill can try to have kids with Bob, but it's not going to work. So, let's go to Bob over here. Bob can have kids with Jennifer. That would be little b, big j. And the last one is Bob can have kids with Jill. And that'll be little b, little j. Let's try it one more time. These people down here. This first guy, we're going to call him Frank, big F. This next guy with a beard, we'll call him Fred, little F. This girl with the blonde hair and the, like a tank top, we'll call her Amy, big A. And this girl with a suit and like reddish blondish hair, we're going to call her Ashley, little A. Once again, if these guys are going to repopulate an island, Frank can have kids with Amy, big F, big A. That's possible. That can happen. Frank can also have kids with Ashley over here, big F, little A. Now, that's it. Frank's done. He cannot have kids with Fred. Amy cannot have kids with Ashley. But we still have Fred. Fred can have kids with Amy, so that'd be little f, big A, and the last combination to repopulate this island, Fred can have kids with Ashley, so that would be little f, little A. 
It is the same exact thing when we're looking at genotypes. So for example, let's say we're looking at eye color. Big B, little B, heterozygous for brown eyes. And we'll say dimples. Big D, little D, heterozygous for dimples. You can pretend like these are names. The only combinations of alleles we can have. The big B can go with the big D. That stands for the F and foil. If you remember, you saw the, the thing as foil. That's the first B. That's the first D. Big D, big B, big D is one combination. O stands for outside. Which ones are on the outside? This B's on the outside, and this little D's on the outside. So big B, little D. That's another combination. I stands for inside. Well, which ones are on the inside? This little B's on the inside, this big D's on the inside. Little B, big D. That's another combination of alleles we can have. And the final one, the L stands for last. That's the last B, that's the last D. So, little b, little d. Those are all the possible combinations of alleles we can get from this genotype right here. Notice that all the letters, there's two of them, and they're all different. So do not give me Bill and Bob having a kid. No. Don't give me that. It's got to be two different letters. It's got to be two letters, and they got to be different. All right. All right, so just to reemphasize this point of how to find the possible number of allele combinations in the gametes, we'll look at these four different genotypes. It does not matter what these letters stand for. I mean, the, the A could be like, big A could equal like, big apples, and little a could be small apple fruit. The T could be for, I don't know, tall apple trees, and little t could be for short apple trees. Does not matter. But, how many different combinations of alleles can you get with big A, little a, big T, little t? Think about that, and I'm going to ask you for your answer. All right. Hopefully, you said that there are four different combinations of alleles in their gametes. To find the four, we use FOIL. F stands for first. That's the first A, that's the first T. One combination is big A, big T. Now, O stands for outside. This A is on the outside, this T is on the outside. So big A, little t is another combination. I stands for inside. This little a is on the inside. This big t is on the inside. So little a, big t is another combination. And finally, L stands for last. That's the last A, that's the last T. So the final allele combination we can have in the gametes would be little a, little t. Now we're going to look at this different genotype right here. Big A can still stand for big apple fruit, and big T can still stand for tall plants. How many allele combinations can we get from that genotype? Think about it, and I'll see if you get the right answer. Now, hopefully you gave me the answer of two. There's only two different combinations of alleles in the gametes for this one. The reason for that is because this organism is homozygous when it comes to the size of the apples. So they're both big A's. So we only really have two combinations. You know, both of these are big A's, so it don't matter which one you pick, they're both the same. They have the same allele. They're going to have big A, big T. So that would be big A, big T. And you can have, it doesn't matter which one you pick, big A, little T. Big A, little T. Now you could do it again. You can use this one and go big A, big T, 
and big A little t again, but they're the same as that. So these are the only two combinations of alleles in the gametes that you can get. Big A, big T. Now, let's try this one. Big A, big A, big T, big T. How many different combinations of alleles can you get from that? Let's see if you can get the correct answer. Now, hopefully you came up with the answer of one. Since they're both homozygous dominant, remember homozygous means same, dominant means it's a capital or big letter. Now sure, you can do FOIL and go, that's the first A, that's the first T, big A, big T. And you can go, O stands for outside, this guy's on the outside, that guy's on the outside, another big A, big T. If you like wasting time, you can keep, you can do this, that's no big deal. I stands for inside. This guy's on the inside. That guy's on the inside. Hey, it's another big A, big T. And L stands for last. So this is the last A. That's the last T. And hey, guess what? It's another big A, big T. These are all the same. So there's only one possibility. It's big A, big T. There is no other possibilities. Okay, so now I'm going to try one. Let's see if I remember how to do this. So we have two plants here. We're crossing two plants. Yes, some plants reproduce sexually through their pollen. So we have one plant that is, and first we're going to look. So we have the type of seeds. They can be round. They can be wrinkled. They can also have a yellow color or a green color. So we're going to try to figure out What's the ratio of the, the offspring, the little baby plants that we get? So the first plant we're going to cross, one of the parent plants, is homozygous round. Now the first step of any uh, Punnett square is to figure out the genotypes of the parents. And since this is a dihybrid cross, each parent plant is going to have four alleles or four letters. So we hopefully remember, that's why I, I made it very clear that it's so important to know these terms. Homozygous means same. So both these R's are going to be the same. Homozygous round. Since they're round, this thing as far as round or wrinkled, it's going to be big R, big R. Because homozygous means same. And since it's round, they're both going to be capital or big R's. Now this plant is purebred yellow. Purebred means the same thing as homozygous. So, since it's purebred yellow, they're both going to be the same, and they're both going to be big Y. Big Y, big Y. So there's the genotype of parent number one. Big R, big R, big Y, big Y. Now we're going to cross it with another plant that is homozygous wrinkled. So homozygous means same, and since it's wrinkled, we know they're both going to be little. So it's going to be little r, little r, let's make that look like an r, and it's going to be true breed green seeds. True breed means the same, just like homozygous means same, and since it's green, it's going to be little y, little y. Now this is the easiest of any of the dihybrids you can get because they're both homozygous for both traits. That makes it super easy. Hopefully you know how many allele combinations you can get from this big R, big R, big Y, big Y. If not, we can do all of them and I will. So remember FOIL. Let me, where can I write FOIL? I write it up here. FOIL. Remember, F stands for first. So, that's the first R. That's the first Y. I'll put that right here. Big R, big Y. Now, I hope you can see where this is going. They're all big R's. They're all big Y's. But, all right, I'll do it anyways. O in FOIL stands for outside. That R is on the outside. That Y is on the outside. Big R, big Y again. I stands for inside. That R is on the inside. It's big. 
That Y is on the inside. It's big. So we got a, another big R, big Y. And last but not least, L stands for last. That's the last R. That's the last Y. So we have, once again, another big R, big Y. Now, the same thing is going to be true for the little r, little r, little, little y, little y. Now, I'll do it for you anyways. F stands for first, so this is the first r, that's the first y, and it's little r, little y. And O stands for outside, so this r is on the outside, that y is on the outside, so once again, it's little r, little y. I stands for inside, so these two right here are on the inside. Once again, it is little r, little y. And L stands for last. That's the last r. That's the last y. And they're both little, so it's once again little r, little y. Now, this makes it so easy when it's like this. Since... All of these are exactly the same. We do not have to do it four times. Whenever you see allele combinations that are the same, you can cross some of them out. So, all those are big R, big Y. So we do not need to do that one, that column, or that column. Because they're all going to be exactly the same. Same thing over here. Since these are all little r, little y's, we don't need to do all of these squares. We can cross out that one, that one, and that one. Basically, all of these boxes are going to be exactly the same. They're all going to be big r, little r, big y, little y. Now, if you have time to kill and you want to do it 16 times, if you want to do it 16 times, the genotypic ratio will be 16 out of 16 equals big R, little r, big Y, little y. But you know what? 16 out of 16 is the same thing as 1 out of 1. Or 100% of these plants are going to have the genotype of big R, little r, big Y, little y. Now the question is, phenotypic ratio, all that's saying is, what are these plants going to look like? Well, since they have one big R, it does not matter if they have one or two, since they have the dominant big R allele, they're all going to have round seeds. So 100% are going to have round seeds. And since they also have one of the dominant yellow seed alleles, 100% of them are going to be also yellow. So 100% are going to be round and yellow. Now that is a super easy one. They get a little bit tougher as you go. And I'll do another one for you. So step one is always, let's turn homozygous round hybrid yellow. Let's convert that into four letters. Homozygous round. Homozygous tells me that they're the same. And I look over here. Round tells me they're both going to be big. So the first plant, big R, big R. Now we got a second trait here, yellow or green. Hybrid tells me that they're going to be different because hybrid and heterozygous mean the same thing. So since it's Y's, the only way we can make it different is we can make one big Y, one little Y. Now it's going to be yellow because it has one dominant big Y allele. Now we're going to cross that with, let's see what we got. Heterozygous round. Heterozygous tells me it's going to be different. And since we're using R's, the only way we can make them different is a big R, little r. The second trait is it's going to have green seeds. Whoa, it doesn't say homozygous, hybrid, or heterozygous. But that doesn't matter because the only way these things can have, and it says greed, it's supposed to say green, the only way it can have green seeds to have the recessive trait, it's got to have two little y's because if it has one big y, one big y will equal yellow seeds. To get green seeds, you got to have two little y's. So there is the genotypes of the parents. 
Okay, step two is find out all the possible combination of alleles in the gametes. Remember, F stands for first. Now, what I do not want to see, don't tell me, oh, the big R is first and then the big R is first. No. Remember, that would be like Ron and Roy trying to have kids. Ron and Roy, both males, cannot have kids. So do not give me the same letter. I need two different letters. First. That's the first R. That is the first Y. That makes sense. Big R, big Y. O over here stands for outside. This R is on the outside and this little Y is on the outside. So that's a big R and that's a little tiny Y. Now, I stands for inside. That's a big R on the inside. That's a big Y on the inside. So that's big R, big Y, and last but not least, L stands for last. That's the last of the R, reading from left to right, and that's the last Y. So that would be big R, little Y. Now for the next guy. F, once again, stands for first. That's the first R, that's the first Y. So we got big R. Little y. Once again, do not give me two r's or two y's. I need two different letters. And definitely two letters, not one. O stands for outside. This r is on the outside. This y is on the outside. And that's a big R. That's a little y. So once again, that's a big R. Little y. I stands for inside. This r is on the inside. And this little y is on the inside. So that's little r, little y, and last but not least, that's the last r, that's the last y, and once again, I don't know why I keep switching colors, but that's little r, little y. Now hopefully, you guys saw from the last slide that we can cut out some of our work. If you notice, we have two that are big r, big y. We do not need to do it twice. So, we can cross out one of those boxes. We also have two that are big R, little y. We don't need to do those twice. So, we can cross out this column right there. If you look over here, we got two that are little r, little y, and two that are big R, little y. We don't need to do both of them. So we can cross out one of the big R little y's, and we can cross out one of the little r little y's. That saved us a lot of work. Now it's just filling in the boxes. Big R, big R, big R, big R, big Y, little y, big Y, little y. Make that look like a y. There we go. Big R, big R, little y, little y. Now we're going to go over here. Big R right there, little r right there. Big R, little r. Big Y, little y. And last, we got a big R up here, little r right there. Big R, little r, little y, little y. Genotypic ratio. So let's just look, let's see how many of these we got. That is big R, big R, big Y, little y. So how many big R, big R, Big Y, little y do we got? I see one, and that's all I see. One out of four. One out of four have that genotype. The next one is this guy. Let's see how many of these we got. Big R, big R, little y, little y. So big R, big R, little y, little y. How many of those we got? Uh, I see one. One out of four have the genotype of big R, big R, little y, little y. Now let's try this one. How many of those we got? Big R, little r. Big Y, little y. I see only one. So we got big R, little r. Big Y, little y equals one out of four. So that's three out of four. We got one left. The last one is this guy right here. Big R, little r. Little y, little y. And of course there's only one of those. So big R, little r little y, little y, equals one out of four. Now, if you always count those up, it should always equal 
to all of them. Should it equal 4 out of 4, 16 out of 16, 8, 8 out of 8, whatever. So, all right, so now the only thing is, what do these things look like? What's the phenotypic ratio? This one's going to have round seeds because it's got two big R's. That's going to have round seeds, two big R's. That's also going to have round seeds. They're all going to have round seeds. So it's just a matter of, are they going to be yellow or are they going to be green? This one's got, got one dominant allele, so it's going to be yellow. And this one's got one dominant allele. It's going to be yellow. So one half or two out of four are going to be round seeds and yellow. Round seeds and yellow. The other two, this one's going to have round seeds, but it's got two little Ys. And this one's going to have round seeds, but it's also got two little Ys. So the other half are going to have round seeds as well, but they're going to have green. Round and green. That's how it works. Now I know what you're thinking. Right now you're all thinking, Rosso, these look like fun. Can we try one? Once again, yes you can. And here's your chance. This is your first chance to do a dihybrid cross. Remember, step one, figure out the genotype or the four letters of the parents. Now here we're doing eye color. Brown or non-blue is dominant. Blue eyes is recessive. And true story, dimples is a dominant allele. So if you have one big D dimple allele, you will have dimples. You have to have two little D's to not have dimples. So what I want you to do is, I want four letters. Give me four letters for hybrid brown eyes, no dimples. And give me four different letters for somebody that has blue eyes and is homozygous for dimples. Figure that out, and yes, there will be a question here in a second. Okay, so hopefully you knew that hybrid means different, just like heterozygous. And the only way we can make B's different is to go one capital or big and one lowercase or little. No dimples. Now I know it doesn't say homozygous, heterozygous, hybrid, true breed, pure breed, but that does not matter because the only way you can have no dimples, since that is a recessive trait, you got to be little d little d. If you got that, go ahead and give yourself a pat on the back. Now we're going to cross that with another person that has blue eyes. Once again, I know it doesn't say homozygous or heterozygous, but that does not matter. Blue eyes is recessive. Since it is recessive, the only way you can have blue eyes is you got to have two little b's or two lowercase b's. Homozygous dimples. Hopefully, you know, homozygous or true breed or pure breed means the same. And since it's dimples, you know that is big D, little d. Now let's see if you can come up with all the possible allele combinations for these two parents. All right, so here we go. Once again, F stands for first. And please, like I said earlier... Do not give me, hey, the bees are first. No, that's like Brad and Bob trying to have kids. That's not going to work. Don't give me that. F stands for first. That's the first B. That's the first D. That makes sense. Big B, little d. O stands for outside. Now this B right here, the big one's on the outside. That's the outside. This D right here, the little D's on the outside. That's on the outside. So that's big B, little d. Once again, big B, little d. I stands for inside. These two little guys here are on the inside of those four letters. And that's little b, little d. So little b, little d. And last but not least, last, or L stands for last. That is the last B we got, and this is the last D we got, and those are also both little. Little B, little D. 
Now let's do it for the other one. F stands for first. That is the first B, reading from left to right, and that's the first D. Little b, big D. So little b, big D. O stands for outside. This B is on the outside. That D is on the outside. So that's little b, big D. Little b, big D. I stands for I stands for inside. This guy's on the inside. Little b. That big D is on the inside. So that is little b, big D. And L stands for last. That is the last of the B's. That is the last of the D's, reading from left to right. So that'll be little b, big D. Now, once again, if you like to waste time, feel free to fill in all 16 boxes if you want. But, since these two are both little b, little d, we do not need to do them twice. So we can cross out that column right there. Since these two are both big B, little d, we don't need to do those twice. So we can cross out that column. Now looking over here on the left side, over here, this is a really nice one. Because since that second plant was homozygous in both traits, they're all little b, big d's. So to save us some time, we don't need to do it four times. We can cross out that one, that one, and that one. And we can just fill in two boxes, which makes it a lot easier than 16. So this box right here is going to be big B, little b, big D, little d. Heterozygous in both traits. This next box is going to be little b, little b, big D, little d. So like always, now you just count up, hey, what? how many of them have this genotype of heterozygous in both? Well, obviously, it's only one. So it's going to be one half or 50% are going to have the genotype of big B, little b, big D, little d. And we only got one box left. It's that one right there. So one half will have the genotype of little b, little b, big d, little d. And the only thing we have to do left is what do these people look like? All right, so what does this person look like? This person, since it has one dominant allele in both traits, it's going to have both dominant traits. So one half of these kids, on average, are going to have brown eyes, and dimples. I'll just put dimps because I'm running out of room. Now, this one right here, what's this? these kids going to look like? Since they have both little b's, both recessive alleles, half of them are going to have blue eyes because little b, little b gives you blue eyes. And it doesn't matter if you have two big d's or just one, since they have the dominant dimple allele, they'll also have dimples or dimps. So that's the genotypic and phenotypic ratio. All right, the last slide. I'm not going to lie to you, I am getting tired of doing these myself. That's why I do not make you do 100 of these because once you can do one or two, you can do a thousand. So this one I'm not going to write it in for you, but I have to do it myself so I can figure out the answers for our Ed Puzzle notes. But anyways, remember, step one, turn homozygous short hybrid purple flowers into four letters, and then turn heterozygous tall white flowers into four more letters. Make sure above each box you have two letters that make sure they're different. So make sure you have a T and a P above each of these columns. Do not give me two T's or two P's. Very common mistake on tests. So I had a song here, Selena Gomez song, and I got in trouble with YouTube, so I had to get rid of it. Alright, I'll see you guys next time.